Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday, July 8th, and quickly I'll mention this upper level low here in the Bahamas, which has started firing thunderstorms today. Typically, these upper lows take a while to work their way down to the surface on the order of several days, and this one really doesn't have that much time as it comes westward towards Florida during the next few days, and it becomes under the influence of this suppressive northeastward flow uh, on the flank of this southeastern U.S. ridge, and uh, this is unlikely to be a threat for development, but will bring rain to the Bahamas and southern Florida over the next couple of days. The main feature of interest is, of course, former Invest 95L, now Tropical Storm Chantal, upgraded by the NHC last night, as she did manage to close off her circulation in the face of the fast trade wind flow, and as she's been fighting it off pretty impressively here, as she has convection persisting since last night, uh, mostly covering the center, though it is still a little bit exposed. You might be able to see uh, the to the trained eye low-level circulation popping out to the northwestern side of the thunderstorms at the end of the loop, uh, but it has nice banding coming in on the western side and uh, thunderstorms have been sustaining themselves better than I expected in the face of this trade wind flow and uh, she has strengthened now to a storm with 50 mile per hour winds as measured by the uh, aircraft reconnaissance mission, mission that just finished its trek through there is now leaving back to St. Croix, and uh, you can see that it found strong winds in red and orange here in the northeastern quadrant, uh, supportive of upgrading it to 50 mile per hour sustained winds, which the NHC just, NHC just did. Uh, this is uh, likely being contributed to largely by the strong trade wind flow with the strong pressure gradient that already exists on the northern side of Chantal, making it very easy for her to generate strong winds in this part of her circulation on the northeastern side here. Uh, and uh, the only problem, though, is that the recon plane actually found very high pressures uh, near her center and very scanty winds, indicating a very weakly closed circulation, um, uh, not quite as well defined as one might have thought based on the satellite picture we just looked at. And uh, the pressures are only about 1,010 to 1,000 millibars in here. And uh, this is really quite weak. Uh, we thought that the pressure was about 1,005 millibars before the plane went in. Turns out it's about 5 or 6 millibars higher than that. And what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that Chantal is a little bit weaker than she appears. And history tells us that when systems coming towards the Lesser Antilles here, especially early in the year, are uh, weak uh, or uh, not very well established with fairly weak circulations and high central pressures, they tend to continue to struggle as they enter the Eastern Caribbean. And the reason for that is that the trade winds uh, speed up even more so here in the Central Caribbean between Hispaniola and South America. And uh, this causes speed divergence in the Eastern Caribbean, which makes it hard for the circulation to hold together. And uh, for this reason, I think that the trade winds will continue to keep Chantal mostly in check. She has done an impressive job a little bit more so than I thought it, uh, uh, intensifying a little bit in the face of this fast flow. But she is not yet strong enough, I think, to really take off in this environment, and I think strengthening will be limited in this region as she heads towards Hispaniola. I have uh, her maxing at about 55 to 60 miles per hour in this region. This is a little bit weaker than the NHC forecast of 70 miles per hour, uh, but regardless, Hispaniola should be expecting a moderate or possibly strong tropical storm coming into their region. The main problem for Hispaniola will be the flooding, uh, which any system, no matter what strength, usually brings to this region if it moves directly over the island, which Chantal likely will. Those high mountains uh, with upslope winds coming off of the ocean uh, usually cause serious flooding problems and this will be probably one of the main concerns with Chantal and this could be the place where Chantal has the greatest chance to cause property and uh, loss of life damage to property and loss of life. Uh, for the Puerto Rico and the northern uh, mid-Antilles islands here, uh, this is likely to be a fairly routine tropical storm. Warnings are out for all of you. And uh, consider this a warm-up storm uh, for what may be coming later this year. And notice how early it is. This is only July 8th, and we have a storm coming from east of 60 west towards the Caribbean. This is very early in the year for this type of thing. We've already had strong tropical waves come through, and this one is now developed, and the models have even more coming uh, perhaps uh, before this month is out, which I'll show at the end of this video. Um, so again, as we've been talking about, the Cape Verde season this year is likely to be stronger than normal, and uh, so you may see far worse things than Chantal possibly coming your way in August and September. Hopefully not, but the pattern favors uh, this area being a little bit more threatened than usual this year, uh, so please be ready and prepared for the rest of the season.
Now back to Chantal here. Here's the model spread you can see bringing it generally west-northwest along the southern periphery of the subtropical ridge uh, which is currently steering it and uh, this is likely to bring it right into Hispaniola. You can see the models tightly clustered here with the NHC down the middle in orange. I have no problem with this track. It looks fairly good. Again likely to cause big problems in Hispaniola and this will likely weaken the storm greatly as well. Typically the very high mountains thousands of feet high over Hispaniola rip apart the circulations of uh, most storms and cause them to weaken. Chantal may even become a tropical depression again on the other side here and it be quite weak and then it will turn northward into the Bahamas and the reason for that uh, is uh, partly because of this upper low over Florida which is currently the one over the Bahamas here which we can see on the GFS in 48 hours is only just over Florida moving very slowly to the west you can see where the GFS has Chantal here perhaps a little bit too far to the northeast on this run uh, but regardless for illustrative purposes you can see uh, that uh, this upper low here sets the edge of the ridge that is steering Chantal indicating a, or developing a path uh, through which Chantal can travel and bend towards the north into the Bahamas uh, coming from uh, South Hispaniola and starting to bend towards the northwest and then as we go out in time here you can see a long wave trough also digging into the eastern seaboard uh, phasing with this upper low here over Florida opening up this path even more for Chantal to gain latitude and move uh, perhaps all the way to the north of the Bahamas clearing them on the western side of this Bermuda High and if we go to the upper level winds here, uh, notice that the upper trough over Florida is actually producing a strong southwesterly flow aloft over Chantal's circulation, which is shown in the uh, bomb of color here. This is indicating high wind shear, which will probably make it difficult for Chantal to re-strengthen immediately after clearing Hispaniola. And for this reason, the Bahamas may get a break and may not see a, a rapidly re-strengthening Chantal, although tropical storm conditions will still be possible in this region. However, she will likely have troubles after her land interactions with Hispaniola recovering from that, and she will likely be a weakling storm in this area. However, things do get more interesting as time goes on. Uh, if we uh, watch uh, for this long wave trough here over the eastern seaboard, watch what happens if we go out another 24 hours. Uh, the base of it actually splits off in what we call a trough split and starts retrograding to the west-southwest here uh, towards the north Gulf Coast. And all of the models agree on this scenario where the base of the trough splits off. And uh, you've, he you've heard me talk about this many times before if you've listened to my videos that uh, upper lows backing away from an incoming tropical system of any type is generally favorable for that system and usually results in strengthening. And uh, this is something that we're going to have to watch carefully because as this low continues to back away from Chantal here, she's coming uh, towards the northwest. And if we look at the upper level winds now, you have an upper level low to the west of the storm providing an outflow channel to the north and an upper level low east of the storm providing an outflow channel to the south. And this provides a nice anticyclonic flow aloft or at least a light area of upper winds that would allow Chantal to begin re-strengthening, perhaps in earnest, north of the Bahamas in this time frame. Now exactly where she is at this time uh, could change and this exact setup could change but the overall pattern is starting to look more favorable for Chantal to have a situation where an upper level low is backing away from her and it's also going to be rotating her back towards the west towards the US. When you get a pattern like this, this is a classic US landfall pattern because this trough base splits away and then this ridge is building back nosing into the north of Chantal towards the Carolinas and should bend her back towards the United States coastline anywhere from Florida to the Carolinas uh, by day five or day six. And again, exact details can't really be pinned down this far in advance. However, this type of pattern has made storms make landfall on the United States shoreline before, and it seems fairly likely to happen again here. The big question in my mind is not whether she will, uh, but how strong she will be when she does so. And currently, again, details are hard to pin down, but with this kind of a pattern, uh, I would watch out for her trying to re-strengthen once she gets into this area in five or six days. And she may be very weak before that point after crossing the mountains of Hispaniola, but look out afterwards. This kind of pattern is fairly favorable. And uh, beyond Chantal here, really quickly, uh, we're looking out for more tropical waves in this active pattern that we've been talking about since early June for uh, mid-July here. And uh, these tropical waves now associated with the MJO really coming off of Africa and uh, being strong as they come out of the African Easterly Jet in part thanks to that MJO, which is hanging around our part of the world for the next couple of weeks. And uh, this next one in particular behind Chantal in uh, seven to 10 days has been really a uh, 
bullish, bullishly developed by the GFS, which has been fairly good at forecasting Tropical Storm Genesis this year. It usually is, and uh, it's showing uh, one of the strongest signatures for development on its ensemble member spread that we've seen this year. These orange colors indicate member disagreement, uh, which indicates that some of these members are showing strong storms approaching the Lesser Antilles on day eight here. So this is something that we will have to watch closely. Again, this is only July, July 16th here on this forecast, and we're already talking about perhaps the second storm after Chantal coming from east of 60 west, indicating a favorable Cape Verde pattern, uh, perhaps indicating that August and September may have uh, many storms in store from the deep tropics this year, uh, as we've been talking about for this season. So this is something to keep an eye on, and we will be watching this carefully as uh, we first deal with Chantal, and then afterwards, perhaps more after that. So we will uh, keep an eye on this, and we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.